What's up, everybody? Welcome to News Games and More, IGN's daily live news show. Sorry we're a little bit tardy today. We're having some technical difficulties, but the show must go on is just a little mm. phrase that I like to say. It's just a little something that I, I made up a long time ago. I'm Damon Hatfield. I'll be your guide for today, Monday, May 18th, 2020. You know it's that day because the hat says so. Uh, and I'm joined today by Zach Ryan. Damon, you've been really into this hat of late, huh? I mean, I just got it. It's a brand new hat. It's not even a week old. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Can I ask you a question before you introduce the rest of our cast? Sure. I'll allow it. You ever you ever put any swears on the hat? I have it. I would never do such a thing. Uh, never do that. All right. I'm also joined today by Seth Macy. Hi, my hat's just a blackout LA Dodgers hat. And I, I don't I'm not okay. even from LA, so wow. And Tom Marks is here. Hello. I don't think I own hats. No hats. <laughs> no, not a single hat. You own a lot of bow ties. They do. But I, I bet you could get a fancy bow tie with an LCD screen on it. <laughs> <laughs> if only. If only. Yeah. So Zach and I are coming to you from San Francisco. Seth is coming to you from the great state of Maine. And Tom is coming to you from snowy Kyoto, Japan, it looks like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Right basically. out his window there. It's a, it's a winter wonderland where he is. Uh, before we get into the news today, I, need, I have uh, some uh, messaging I need to deliver to you. Hey, Star Wars fans. I'm just making this up as I go along, by the way. Hey, Star Wars fans. I'm talking to very specifically you now. Before you make too many plans this week, be sure to get these dates on your calendars. Tuesday, May 19th, 5 p.m. Pacific. Watch from Home Theater is celebrating the 15th anniversary of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, with, with voice of Ahsoka Tano, Ashley Eckstein, and Cameron Monaghan of Jedi Fallen Order. Then, Thursday, May 21st, also at 5 p.m. Pacific, they're getting together with Rahul Kohli to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. I'm not exactly sure who Rahul Kohli is, but I'm sure it's a very cool person. That's two big anniversaries and two big episodes of Watch From Home Theater. All this week, don't miss them. And that brings us to our lead story today. Ubisoft is suing Apple and Google over a mobile Rainbow Six Siege clone. The game was created by Alibaba's eJoy.com. It's called Area F2. <laughs> Ubisoft's suit claims that Area F2 copies virtually every aspect of Rainbow Six Siege, noting the operator selection screen and final scoring screen as being particularly derivative. Uh, the game has millions of downloads so far. It touts itself as the first close quarters battle FPS. Seth, can you can you confirm that's what B, CQB stands for? Yes, Charlie Quebec Bravo. Close quarters battle. Amazing. Uh, on mobile, the first one on mobile, offering a sec selection of agents, destructible environments, and equipment, which certainly sounds mm. familiar. IGN's agents have tried it out for ourselves, and uh, they found the resemblance is striking. Ubisoft reportedly contacted Apple and Google about the game and its infringement, but both companies have failed to remove the game from the App Store or Google Play Store. My question is, why is Ubisoft going after Apple and Google instead of Alibaba? So... This is this is the question that I had too, Damon. Because like, why pick on the little guys? You know, yeah. Like, why why go exactly. after you know some just young upstart bucks? Mom like and pop app and store. Google. Yeah. <laughs> why not take it to the source? You know. What yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, have a real comment on that. Just a joke. But I have okay. a theory, but I don't hmm. know for sure because th th this is all speculation on my part. But my theory yeah. is that it's much easier to pressure Apple and Google into taking something down that could get them in trouble than it is mm. to prove that this game completely 100% is like infringing. Like, I, I think it's easier essentially to make the case to Apple and Google, like, hey, it is not worth the trouble to leave this on your store. Right. And it is to have to like, prove in a court of law that alibaba 100 stole ideas from them like yeah that, that's yeah. my my theory at least i th i think you're right on the money there tom and a lot of the response uh you know because i i kind of had a similar question to damon's when i saw the story breaking and then a lot of the response on social was people asking you know like or or commenting to the effect of like yeah they should really be monitoring you know what what sort of shovelware they're putting out on these platforms because obviously like the app store and uh, the the Google equivalent is is inundated with games. Just every day, there's new games going up all the time. And if something is so blatantly derivative, or you know, uh, so obviously uh, a ripoff of something else, like it's kind of on on Apple and Google to an extent to do that legwork and say like, hey, this is not something that we want to promote and make money off of, right? Hmm. Yeah. 
and also the 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 up like and this is it's a different situation but it's very much the same kind of core of it is if you look back at something like the napster whole napster thing or what's going on with youtube copyright stuff right now is too like it's all different flavors of the same situation right where it's like napster got shut down because they were hosting illegal things right mm -hmm. like they were other people were breaking the law by up copyright infringing and uploading stuff but they were the host so they were the thing that was taken down because it was easier than going after all the individual people similar with youtube like if somebody uploads something illegal or infringing on youtube youtube is the one that'll get in trouble for that because it's not worth going after every person who infringes on youtube and i think it might also just be a similar thing to that where it's just like it's just easier to go after the person who is the overall blanket of this because it's not like this is it's not like ripoff games are like a totally new phenomenon or this is the no, first no. one or anything yeah, yeah. for sure I I also think that, uh, you know, Alibaba being like a huge Chinese company, which makes it international, is probably a lot harder to sue <laughs> than right. it would be Apple and Google who are like, you know, just down the road. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they can just walk over there with the, the lawyers. Yeah, easier. Easier to serve them. Well, it's not right now. Easy. You can't right. serve a lawsuit from six feet away right now. So it's it's tricky. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the new serve from home initiative. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, down in the comments of uh, of this uh, story on IGN, Mando 44646 says, maybe this can force Apple and Google to regulate their stores then. I love seeing all the knockoff Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z with reused assets I see in terribly named Chinese games. I don't see how these companies get away without regulating their storefronts. And yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it is more about ma like making an example uh, and trying to get Google and uh, Apple to change their overall policies. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I mean, th there's that, but there's also the, you know, the Ubisoft has an entire mobile division. They develop mobile games. Yep. I'm sure that, you know, somewhere on the back burner that they might consider a Rainbow Six mobile game that is, you know, just a little too similar to what these guys are trying to knock off of their already existing IP. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah and their, their slogan was going to be the world's first CQB mobile game. And now they can't they can't <laughs> say that. Well, now that's just flagrant false. Gone. They'd be like, world right. second. Ah. Oof, yeah. yeah this, this is neither here nor there with the legal stuff. But man, I cannot imagine an FPS I want to play less than Rainbow Six Siege on a phone. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Named after my favorite uh, function key, the F2. <laughs> but I mean, every, every big FPS, I guess almost every big FPS has a mobile version, uh, right? Like even True. Like Fortnite, Call of Duty, PUBG. Uh, I mean, it's just, it seems right, like a lot of people. Metroid Prime. <laughs> Seems like a lot of people are happy to play these games on, on mobile phones. Overwatch doesn't have its own, but it yeah. also has a Chinese knockoff version of Overwatch. So, you know. Yeah. Underview. I think that's what it's proved, right? Is if if companies don't make it themselves, yeah. someone else will rip it, rip it off. Yeah. It's just entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's just smart business. You got to fill in the... I think we can all agree that nothing is original and everything is a copy of something else. So that's true. Yeah, that's definitely true. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Alibaba is a big company. Is it does seem weird that they would if this is a flagrant copy? Is it seem weird that they would allow it? And does it make you think that they've their lawyers are already they already looked over this and said it's different enough that they're safe to put this out there? Possibly. Yeah, that's I mean, I don't know. Have you ever surfed Alibaba? You can. No, I can't say I have. <laughs> oh boy, it's it's incredible. Uh, you can get anything you want. You can get your enamel pins made, or you could get uh, heavy farm equipment, all wow. on the same website. It's it's fantastic. I love Alibaba. <laughs> uh, you find some good deals on there. You can find incredible deals if you don't mind waiting three to eight weeks <laughs> to see them materialize in your home in a in a weird weirdly wrapped box. Well. <laughs> My hat might have come from Alibaba. I don't know. <laughs> <They have. laughs> uh, okay. That's enough of Area F2. Um, we'll see if we get any updates in the future on how Ubisoft's lawsuit is going against Apple and Google. Uh, let's move on to uh, talk about some more Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. We got the news that that was uh, officially official last week. Today comes news that it won't have microtransactions. At launch, mm. Vicarious Visions boss Jen O'Neill uh, told GameSpot, everything that you see at launch is going to be unlocked with gameplay. We're not planning on having monetization at launch. Does that 
<laughs> no, this is Activision, remember? And uh, even Vicarious Visions, another game that they uh, remade recently with Crash Team Racing, Nitro Fueled, that game mm-hmm. launched without microtransactions and then got them two months later. Yeah. So what is this? Does this leave you thinking that's entirely possible that could be the case with uh, yeah. Tony Hawk? Oh, yeah. It's gonna the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Card Battler or something that they make you... <laughs> Sounds okay. I mean, I might actually play that. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be like you be able to buy like decks or wheels or you know, some some new skaters and this that yeah. and the other maybe I mean, maybe some I, of the younger fellas out there today i would love i would love for it to be you know like a season pass or a broader expansion you know the, the fact that they have to go so far as to say like won't have microtransactions at launch yeah means that like there's not even a question about whether or not they're coming right because they're gonna come or else they wouldn't put that disclaimer on the end i think that what if they were really smart what they would do is wait and then they would do a plus three expansion or a plus four expansion and just Ooh. add the entirety of all the levels and move sets from Tony Hawk three and four and maybe some of those bonus characters and stuff. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, use Tony Hawk one and two as a platform for expanding, uh, you know, to the other, uh, the other two traditional Tony Hawk games from, I think three and four were PlayStation two era games, right? I think yes. so. Yeah. I think so. Um, are you, so, yeah. are you a, are you a believer in Tony Hawk 4? I like Tony Hawk 4 quite a bit. Yeah. I think I like Tony Hawk 4 better than 3, less than 2. Wow. 2 is, mm-hmm. two is up there in like the pantheon of games that I think yeah. are almost perfect. Like 2 is an yeah. incredible game. So, yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Seth, where do you come down on Tony Hawk? Oh, I love Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Are you kidding me? But it's like which not- one? Which, which one's the oh, best? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, God. You know what? Like, I, I'm going to say. Th- two because i played it the most of all that's, and i just fair. was really really good at it yeah and then tom are you a tony hawkman i used to be more than i am now yeah. i i think two yeah, i mean i think everybody used to be more than they are now. <laughs> <laughs> fair i guess what i meant more is like i used to be more into skating games also yeah, well like, i'm not as much of i'm not one of the people that was like a tony hawk fan that then became a skate fan and is crying for like skate four and five and six and all those. Like I, I like Tony Hawk two, two was always my favorite, but I also had a lot of love as a kid for underground man. The mm-hmm. underground series was like, I, I, I thought that was a really cool twist on that, that formula, obviously not everything and it worked, but I'm mm-hmm. definitely excited to come back to it with this. That's for the sure. First, the first Tony Hawk underground does have my favorite Tony Hawk level of all time, which is Moscow. Cause you can, if you can jump up, if you can get high enough on there, you can just grind you can just do grind tricks all around the entire city. Amazing. It's incredible. Oh, man. Yeah. Really played the hell out of all of those games, to be honest. Uh, so why would uh, developers or publishers do this? Uh, launch a game without microtransactions and then add them later? Because uh, everyone would be real mad. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, why was I missing the game? You're charging I'm, me for content. So there's that, but also like... This is a thing that, frankly, Activision has been doing with regularity in recent years and drives me bonkers. <laughs> because what they've been doing is, like, I'm totally cool. I actually don't have a problem with a developer releasing a game full price, no microtransactions, everything's in the game. And then on kind of the long tail of that game, they're like, well, you know, people are still playing this. We want to offer them new content, but we need to make money on being the time spent developing that content. So we're going to charge for stuff like that. I'm fine with, but yeah. Activision has been doing this thing recently where it feels, and I'm maybe this is unfair of me, but it feels more nefarious than that, where it feels like they've got at microtransactions ready to go. And they're just like holding them a couple weeks <laughs> so that everyone can talk about how, there aren't microtransactions in the game yeah. and the controversy blows over because that's such a hot topic. And then they get added in. And it's basically what you would have seen at launch, just waiting so that nobody can talk about it during like reviews and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. yeah. It's my favorite skater trick. Actually. It's the 360. have your cake and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I I'll, I'll allow it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, that could be really unfair of me too, but it's well, what it's, yeah. like. There's also the uh, idea that it uh, avoids them having to disclose it in the ESRB rating. Mm-hmm. Right. So, mm-hmm. Right. So now that microtransactions or, or loot box or random items isn't point, one of the bullet points in their ESRB rating, which, yeah, I agree is pretty shady. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Seth, as a, as a father of uh, mm -hmm. two young two young men, does is, are microtransactions like a something you have to think about and worry about? Like, yeah, it's, spending, it's, spending... <laughs> it's the worst. Okay. We we figured okay. it out over the course of when they were really into Fortnite. They spent three hundred dollars on that game. Yeah, and it just adds up because they're like, hey, uh, there's this thing we want. It's five bucks, and I'm like, yeah, five bucks, I'm... whatever. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like three hundred dollars on Fortnite with two boys. You guys kind of got off easy. Like, yeah, like easy. Uh, I feel like that's like. Well, now they're like, oh, number. Fortnite. I would never play that game. I never even liked oh, really? it. I'm like the bank statements. <laughs> I've got the receipts. I've literally got the receipts. Some, there, of, us, some of us might remember a uh, uh, dearly. Oof, we lost Zach. Oh, am I here? Oh, did Night. I? Now you're back. Now you're back. Okay. Yeah, some of us might might remember Craig Gibson worked for IGN for a long time, and he would always say like his boys would text or call him in the middle of the day to be like, "Oh, the new season pass. I only need twenty dollars. Come on, Dad, help me out." <laughs> I always thought that Seth, was very good. That is Seth, a real thing. Yeah. Seth, your kids are off Fortnite. Oh, they've been off Fortnite for a long time now. Yeah, they're, they're on, just because they're Destiny playing Area, Area F two, right? They're playing Area F two. <laughs> All the transactions are cosmetic in that one. Hmm. Yep. Uh, do you think they'll play Tony Hawk one and two remaster? Not, not at all. No, <laughs> no, no, it's, I, I'm just being honest, you know, like, uh, I'm not going to try to force them into the things that I used to be into. Yeah. I'm going to let it happen organically. My youngest son might be into it just because, you know, you get to do loop de loops in the air, but yeah, I don't think like he's going to be, I don't think I'm, I'm going to be making a new dead Kennedys fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too, it's never too early for dead Kennedys. Right. <laughs> Yeah. That's All right then. All right, Tony Hawk Pro Skater One and Two. No microtransactions at launch. Let's move on to man, a game I always forget that it even exists until there's uh, an update every few months or so. <laughs> Anthem, <laughs> Bioware's Anthem, which was released over a year ago now, and uh, in February they uh, announced they were working on version 2.0 of Anthem. But today comes news that we should not expect this overhaul anytime soon. The revamp is still in the incubation period and creation of a new version of the game will be a, quote, longer process. There's a team, uh, about 30 people work on the game and they're all working from home during the pandemic. Uh, a quote from, uh, I guess, the, the lead of the team is, we are starting to validate our design hypotheses. We are going back and experimenting and prototyping to improve on the areas where we believe fell short and to leverage everything that you love currently about Anthem. According to him, the nature of this approach means Anthem 2.0 will be a longer process, so don't expect the new version of the game to arrive anytime soon. Uh, man, is there any way this game makes a recovery? And mm. has, like a, has like a No Man's Sky recovery? So, I, I was so excited for Anthem when it came out. Yeah. Like, I was so stoked for that game, and I maybe played 10 hours of it and hung it up. And, yeah. you know... I, I think to the team's credit, like they really have tried to shake things up a little bit and have just had pretty abysmal results. And, and I, I think at this point, like I, I think that there is something there. There's something in that game that could potentially be a big hit. I think it would behoove them if they're looking at like a 2.0 release to take a destiny or a Warframe approach and make it a free to play game with, you know, expansions and updates and stuff that you might pay for things like that so, like i think that the idea of trying to market anthem or a sequel in a way that isn't just like free from the jump is ultimately going to do them more harm than good like it, the, the reputation the conversation around that game is too spoiled at this point and you know yeah. what, if they if what they're looking for is like a real comeback they need to do like a hard reset tom what do you think I think there's hope. I've seen, frankly, I've seen worse games get better, right? Mm -hmm. like there, mm -hmm. there, there are plenty of bad games out there that have undoubtedly turned it around. And I think, to Zach's point, you're right that I think they're going to have to go hard with that. And that's sort of what it looks like they're doing, right? Like, if this was a statement that was like, you know, we're making really good progress and we're really we're excited to show what we've got for you, then I'd be like a little more, bit more like, all right, you're going to spend like, like how much time are you actually going to spend revamping the problems of this game? But right now this sounds like do not expect this anytime soon. We are in this deep to fix these problems and we're going to come out on the other end when we're happy with what we have. At least that's like the vibe I get. And like, that's what they need to be doing if they want to be saving this. So I think there's hope. It's just like, 
it's un it's undoubtedly a big sort of ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Seth, did you play any anthem? I did not I did not play any anthem. I had no interest in playing anthem. And with this, I mean I, I definitely respect uh the work that's going into it, and I'm excited for the creators to sort of be grinding along trying to salvage this game that was not well received at, at all and you could probably get for 4.99 new right now which by the way i recommend i didn't get no man's sky when it was 4.99 now i regret it because it's always oh, yeah. 30 bucks but <laughs> at the same time i have to wonder like could these 30 designers be better served working on something new yes. like why are they trying yeah. to salvage this game that nobody liked <laughs> at yeah. all well i think part of it at least for me was because there there was parts of it that were really stunning right like and, i mean honestly like the the flight stuff is incredible like the has, way that that game of, moves is really really incredible it has some of in my opinion some of the best flight movement in a game yeah. like that kind of ever like there were parts of it that really 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 were cool even the world was like really interesting conceptually and just like not executed quite well the story again was like cool but totally didn't mesh with what the gameplay was there were all these parts of it that were just like made it fundamentally broken but not like fundamentally repulsive if that makes sense like it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> yeah. like a thing that was like oh why would anyone like that it was just like a it, it just didn't work mm. yeah well why not take the like the flight mechanics that just that work and just make a whole new game you know johnny and the magic wing boots honest to god i don't know why they did not make an iron man game out of that yeah exactly right <laughs> or donnie and the magic wing boots sounds cool too or that mm -hmm. yeah. by the way that's copyrighted knock knock on wood <laughs> double stamp that's mine uh man i don't know i just i have a hard time seeing it. if this game is out next year even or like later than that it's just like who's gonna care <laughs> yeah who's well, gonna that like that's the bigger question to me is if they spend the time that they need to to make it a better thing right at what point is that time not better served just making anthem 2 i guess like or or are they worried that there's so much goodwill burned with anthem that if they just yeah. came out and did anthem 2 people would reject it outright like i don't know i i think yeah. it's the latter tom and i think i think the move you know is go dark work on these expansions these upgrades the things that they want to do re-release anthem with a you know a nice subtitle anthem valley of the gods or something for <laughs> playstation for playstation 5 and series x and you know really lean into the idea that this is a free-to-play game now with you know cosmetic upgrades or whatever however they want to make their money um because one thing is true there's one golden rule in video games and that's that people will play free games and if you make a game that is good enough and it's free like people will play it and they will ev evangelize for it and like that gives you a platform to to reassess and recreate and and you know go back to the well as many times as you need to like look at warframe now versus what warframe was when it launched it's a completely different game and it's this massive massive game you know what i mean it's this huge mmo and I think that there is a potential for Anthem to take like a Warframe path. Um, but in order to do that, they do have to distance themselves from the narrative that they've built up around it at, the, at this time. Though I yeah. will say the, the one thing that Anthem absolutely has against it compared to Warframe is that one of Warframe's kind of secret, the secret sauce of what made Warframe amazing and continues to make Warframe amazing is their their agility, their ability to just like make updates for that game and change things on the fly and talk to the community and see what they didn't like and then go again and just keep updating and updating and adding and adding and adding. And like, I don't think you can do that on Frostbite. I don't think you can do that with the engine that Bioware is using for that game. I don't think that you could ever in a million years, even with the exact same team, keep up pace with content of a game like Warframe for Anthem. So I think that they like... They, they're going to have to make some sort of concession for what they have, and I just don't know what that is yet. That's uh, fair point. Ben55XB1 in the, in the uh, chat says, anyone remember Evolve? Uh, and that's a good example <laughs> of another game that they, they tried to turn around. I think it actually went free-to-play, right? It did. Yep. Yeah. It did go free-to-play, yeah. But I don't think they were able to um, uh, no. generate much interest in it. And then I'm also... I also point, to Zach's point, because Zach said... 
people will play free games as long as they're good they'll evangelize for them and i think yeah. evolve just like had problems <laughs> yeah uh and then i think about um fallout 76 i think bethesda's still working on that they haven't really managed to turn that one around yeah but you know what's yeah. th- this is exactly what i'm saying like fallout 76 is like pretty unanimously considered not a very good game but there are a lot of people that play that game all the time and love it. Like our, our yeah. very own Mark Medina loves yeah. that game and actually kind of won't shut up about it to the point of annoyance. Sorry, Mark, I love you. But like, yeah, I, this, this just kind of speaks to what I was saying earlier. Like if you've got a game that's free and you're constantly updating it, even if it's like, okay, people will play it. People will be there for it because it's like, well, I don't have to pay for this and it's here and there's new stuff in it all the time. Hmm. Uh. I'm actually seeing a lot in the chat, a lot of people that um, like Area F2. I guess uh, people have been playing it and they say it's a well-made game. So I don't know. That creates a different story because if they want to have... Uh, this is We're going all, all the way back to our first topic of the show. If they want a Rainbow Six uh, experience on their mobile uh, device and Ubisoft hasn't presented them one, well, here is one that they can play. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to fault those people and even um, eJoy, if that was the company that made it for providing uh an experience that ubisoft isn't mm-hmm. there's two sides to every story this is something i like to say uh <laughs> it's another one of your famous catchphrases <laughs> let's move on would you guys believe that today may 18th is the 10 year anniversary of red dead redemption i would believe that mm. i yeah. think you're lying well it is released yeah. this day this day, May 18th, 2010. Crazy. Um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know if that feels like a long time or not. I can't decide. Back when Rockstar made video games. Oh. Well, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Two that's years not, ago, they just put out Red Dead 2. That's not hating on uh, anything Rockstar makes or Rockstar as a company even. It's just, it, it, I was always flabbergasted where if you look at a timeline of Rockstar's game releases... It's like yeah. they're pumping out multiple games a year sometimes, and then you get to GTA Five and it just stops. And then it they didn't need to make any more. Right. Like they were just doing GTA. <laughs> Top selling game of all time. Right. I'm not I'm not I'm not hating that, man. GTA five is great. And they they Imagine they, if every day your right. doorbell rang and you opened it up and a big bag of money just fell on top of you. That's <laughs> that's great F Auto Five. Yeah. And it clearly like, I'm done for the day. <laughs> you know, that, that that ability to just focus down on what they wanted to make made GTA Online stay alive really long. It made Red Dead 2 really great. Like, like it yeah. did a lot of things, but yeah. Uh did you guys like Red Dead Redemption? Uh yeah, I like Red, the original Red Dead Re- Redemption quite a bit. It's actually <laughs> one of the few Rockstar games that I've actually finished. Uh I think it's a, a pretty compelling story. And uh, I didn't get really sucked into like all the side stuff like a lot of people did. You know, like I know people played poker and did, you know, bounty hunts and stuff for like hours and hours in that game, especially in the online modes. But just blasting through the story once, you know, I found it to be like a really great game. Yeah. Yeah. I I honestly. Well, I I never I I, unlike Zach, I did not beat the game because. Mm just like me with every other open world game, I just ran around and like shot snakes or whatever. <laughs> just like, Oh, there's something over there. And I just rode, rode over to it and never did any of the story stuff. But <laughs> I think they should bring this out on PC for God's sake. It's been 10 years. It's crazy. It hasn't, yeah. It's crazy. It hasn't been there yet. After Red Dead yeah. 2 came to PC, everyone was like, sure. They were going to do a remaster or something. And they just like never did. Nope. That is crazy. I would have guessed that it's been on PC for a long time. Well, Red Dead 2 is maybe like top three games of all time for me. Okay. I like I like the original Red Dead so much more than I liked Red Dead 2. Yeah. Okay. I'm with I'm with I'm with Zach on that one. And Tom, you also agree? Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. Uh, but I also I was also of of the group of people who was not fond of Red Dead 2 pretty much at all. Hmm. Wow, I didn't realize I was gonna be the only one who was right on tonight's show. <laughs> I think I can't remember. I can't. It's killing me because I can't remember who tweeted this, but I saw somebody tweet that they thought Red Dead Redemption 2 was the least enjoyable masterpiece they'd ever played. And I think that's I mean, similar to how I feel too. I think like I technically that. that game is incredible and I just had absolutely no fun playing it whatsoever. That's exactly how I feel about Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I, I, I agree with a lot of what Tom is saying. I thought Red Dead 2 is impressive on many levels. A beautiful game. Maybe the best video game story I've ever experienced. Incredible yeah. acting. But just, man, like, what a slog. It just felt like such a chore so, to actually play through that game. Can I, explain, are... can I explain a weird <laughs> phenomenon? I just want to run this past you guys. Okay, so okay. I play probably 25 hours of Red Dead too right like i got all the way up to saint denis which i think is like 25 30 hours into the game yeah uh every time i played it it felt like i was doing homework like every time i sat down it was like oh i gotta play this game i gotta play it for seven hours to even make any progress and i gotta play it because i you know everybody says that it's this masterpiece and stuff and eventually i got to a point where i was just bored and i was like okay i quit i don't want to play this anymore forget it deleted it off my hard drive moved on to the next thing but in this weird quarantine time when I have all this time now, every so often, every few days, it pops into the back of my head like, maybe you should give Red Dead 2 another shot. It's like, why? Why do I feel that way? Like, I didn't enjoy my time with it. Why do I feel compelled to go back and play it now? I think it's because people like Seth saying, you know, it's like this amazing experience. And, and you know, am I... Am I better served just watching all the cutscenes on YouTube or <laughs> should no. I go back and invest 85 hours into it, you know? Yes, I have over, I think, 150 hours. I haven't even beaten it yet. I haven't even opened what? up the whole map. What? I, That's I'm amazing. I say this every time that Red Dead 2 haters come out. It is the closest I have ever felt to an experience where I was in a different time and place. The fact that it is so slow that you have to bring the bolt back on your gun and put it forward again. Or the fact that you have to order things from a catalog, you feel like you're in 1905. You don't feel like you're in 2018 when it came out. You, for me, it feels like a, uh, like a West world sort of recreation of an entirely different era. And the, the slow pacing is deliberate and perfectly makes it feel like you are in this different time when you couldn't do things like, uh, I don't know, talk on a phone or, or have I, a, a I, web show every night. I, I hate to interrupt you, Seth, but I just want to point out that you, you're you just saying, you know, it, it really makes you feel like mm -hmm. a cowboy, which yeah. is obviously, you know, something that, that comes up a lot in discussions about IGN and reviews and things like that. And at the same exact moment, <laughs> Eric Cartman in the comments says, you are nitpicking and biased. I win. Bye bye. And I just wanted to talk about the confluence of donkey relativity that just happened <laughs> on this show in that moment. And that was amazing. Well done to the both of you, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I win. Bye bye. <laughs> Seth, I'm fast. I'm fascinated that you couldn't uh you weren't like um compelled to actually play through any of the real story in the original red dead but you think red dead 2 is just this the story in red dead 2 is fantastic it is it my is. favorite video game story of all time it is but the story in red dead 1 is also very very good so well it's, it's i didn't know that at the time i'll revisit it when, it, when they bring it to, <laughs> to pc for its 10th anniversary this year wow. surprise announcement it's not gonna happen sure of course you have to say that also it wouldn't be a surprise <laughs> uh so in 2018 seth you voted for red dead 2 for game of the year yeah i was furious when uh <laughs> god of war was well, yeah i was flipping tables over i was like it's a great game but it's an eight <laughs> which is by the way uh, on our scale eight is great this that is true these are that some like deep-seated opinions that are coming out right now on the side jam team I, I think that if you're furious over a uh, video game, you really got to reevaluate a lot. You can't tell me how to live my life, Zach. You really got to reevaluate. I win. Bye bye. <laughs> I win. Bye bye. Uh, well, would you believe that Red Dead Redemption is not the only game turning ten today? Today is also the tenth anniversary of Alan Wake. Mm. Xbox okay. 360 exclusive. Has mm -hmm. anyone else played this game? I never played Alan Wake. Wait, Alan Wake? Yeah. yeah. I oh, played yeah. Alan Wake. I, I actually, I played, I loved Control so much last year that I went back and played Alan Wake for the first time. Oh, no kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what was that experience like? It was, that game mostly holds up. Like it actually, it, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's, it's really fun and weird and cool. And like, it was very strange playing it in the context and i'm going to try to avoid spoilers here but it was strange playing it in the context of having read the teases for it in control because 
when you're playing Alan Wake, the whole question is like, is this really happening? Are you going crazy? What's going on? But having played it in Control, where Control is like, oh yeah, that actually happened. And so I was going through the game like, oh, okay, yeah. this all actually <laughs> happens. <laughs> and like, I, it was a little bit of the mystery was gone in a weird sort of way. But I played mm-hmm. through it specifically because I knew Control or Alan Wake DLC was probably coming for Control and I wanted to be kind of looped into that world. And I'm really glad I did. Yeah, I, I really like that they're sort of connecting the worlds of Control and Alan Wake, sort of shared universe there. Uh, but Seth, you never played Alan Wake? I did not. I feel like I missed out. It's a good game. It's a game. Did you play Control? I haven't played Control yet either, but it's on sale. <laughs> deal, steal, steal. Deal, steal, steal. <laughs> Do you think you have a pretty good grasp of every game that's on sale at any given time? Uh, no, but I have enough uh, knowledge to be able to find the best deals within minutes. Wow. Yes. It's not all about what you keep up here. It's about the process. It's just like the Philadelphia 76ers of a few years ago. <laughs> well, you guys aren't basketball fans? I, I, Zach got a sports <laughs> shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you caught He's me like, handed there, Zach. Definitely yeah. misread the room. <laughs> Seth wins. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, and also turning to today is Split Second. Does anybody remember the game Split Second? That's oh, a yes. uh, that's the racing game, right? Yeah, that game. Reality yeah. reality show racing game from yeah. Disney Interactive. That was oh, a cool wow. game. Disney yeah. made that game. Yeah, Didn't make it. Right. They published. They published it. Okay. 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 I remember yeah, that was second. Funny. I I used to. Th- I thought that was so cool. The yeah. what, like, the the whole concept of like yeah, you can trigger things mid race that will totally change the course. It was like that was awesome. Yeah. Too bad. I think I think um, that developer shut down. We never got a sequel Aww. to Split Second, but that was a very cool game. Uh, Third. <laughs> Split Second would be a good twenty questions game, Damon. It would be Ooh. a good twenty <laughs> questions game. That'd be a really and tough I, one. And I can use it because I don't think. Um, Sam, Tina, or Justin watch this show, so it'll be kind of surprised. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know this, actually, but they're not allowed to watch it. Pear oh, said really? no. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, the Magnificent Orange in chat says he remembers Split Second. <laughs> they remember. had a great demo, too. I remember that. Um, I, it's not a nice even 10, but there is a game turning 11 years old today, and that's Punch Out on the Wii. Man. I didn't I play that one. My- I dragged my feet on that. I finally got it at GameStop because it was like eight bucks. Yeah. And uh, man, I wish I had played that game when I had still had my Wii hooked out. So I didn't <laughs> hooked up. So I didn't have to drag it out to play because that is a fantastic game. Yeah. Did, punch you out is great. Great. did you use your Wii balance board? I did not use my Wii balance board, um, but I do remember like being genuinely baffled by some of the, the patterns. And it yeah. was so cool to play because, you know, I know all the patterns for uh punch out featuring mr dream yeah I almost almost said the <laughs> old version of what it's called but uh yeah so that was really fun and it's great and it's charming and they should make a new one they should make a new one and they should also bring that one to switch that would be wonderful they they did make a new one it's called arms well yeah that's true. <laughs> not the same. i'm not trying to throw shade at arms or anything but it's not i'll throw true. some shade at arms uh, <laughs> Arms is, little... Arms is such a weird, very Nintendo game. Yeah, um, I'm glad that it exists. Let's uh, instead of looking back at older games, let's look ahead at uh, new games that are coming out this week. You're going to get a chance to play the wonderful 101 remastered. And is this actually for uh, other platforms? Is it coming to like PS4 and Xbox? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Not mm-hmm. Xbox, Switch, PS4, and PC. And PC. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, formerly Wii U exclusive. I right. think I just played this at a preview event. I never played the final game. Anyone play the final game? Yeah, um, if I could, if I may. Yeah, uh, if I may. The, the Wonderful 101 kicks ass. This there game is great, and I'm really excited to play through it again. Um, I feel like I'm one of seven people that played it on the <laughs> Wii U. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a, a big fan of Platinum, and this game is so, like, it's such a weird mix of very different for them, but also, like, obviously a platinum game it's it's a really cool little game i like it a lot yeah yeah it looks really cool the the reviews have been very divisive for this remaster Mm -hmm. yeah we gave it a nine we gave it a nine yeah but i've seen they're like fours and fives uh that have been popping up too so yeah Yeah. and i think i think part of that if i can like shed a light on some of the things we think about with remasters is like Mm -hmm. the question of do you review 
with any game like with any remaster like this the question of do you review the remaster or do you review the game right because mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. and it's even trickier and this isn't like a, a hard there's not a hard fast answer to this but like it's even trickier with a game like wonderful 101 where like so few play people played it on the wii u that for a lot of people this isn't really even a remaster it's just sort of port mm-hmm. like yeah like how does that all come into it because i i think it's not a stretch to say that the wonderful 101 I love it. I think it's a great game, but this remaster is sort of bare bones, right? It's not like an overly impressive remaster, but mm-hmm. it is an impressive game still. So mm-hmm. like, how do you judge that? How do you think about that? And I'm sure that's part of why the reviews were really divisive is because some people are looking at it as a remaster. What did this do to fix the problems of the original game? What did it do to make it better? And then other people are just looking at it like, Hey, let's just review this game. And like, I think, or, or, you know, a mix that's obviously reductive, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways you can think about a game like this and especially reviewing a game like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Well, speaking of remasters, another one out this week is Saints Row the third remastered. Uh, Yeah. I think Saints of the Third is a very, very fun game. It's my is that the one where you have the superpowers? No, that was four. That, that was four. four. Okay. Third yeah, is prefer- like generally a lot of people's favorite, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, that was before. Four is just like, four was supposed to be DLC for three, so when it came out, it just felt very samey to me. Mm. Um, and then there yeah, was Sad Out of Hell, which no one talks about. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I, I've heard mixed things about how well this remastered uh, has been handled. Tom, have you heard anything about that? No, about, I haven't like, heard my- frame rate issues, maybe. No, I haven't heard anything okay. about the, this remaster specifically. Okay. Uh, and also out this week, a new game, not a remaster, is Man Eater, the game where you play as a shark oh. and eat people, right? This game looks so awesome. The yeah. Hall and Oat song. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think our own Dan Stapleton <laughs> is reviewing that one for us, and that one's out this week. So sweet. That, that one they that one looks really fun. All they have to do is just not mess it up. Just allow me to swim around as a shark and eat people. Don't overthink it. And it will probably be pretty fun. But you can also do like crazy stuff, right? Like you can upgrade your shark to have like bionic jaws and stuff. Like it's oh, really cool. Wild. Really? Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. You, it's like a it's like a shark RPG. It's like, oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really shark cool PG. Game, like, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, this is also coming from like it's such a silly concept, but it's coming from Splash Damage, where the making your makers of the Killing Floor series, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. Killing Floor Two is a phenomenal game. So like they, you know, like they they know their stuff, right? Like this is not a stu- like some random studio. Yeah, they know how to make good games. Well, I don't know Killing Floor. Is that a first person shooter? It is. I don't, okay. mm-hmm. Killing Floor is like uh, it's like a wave based first person shooter where you kill zombies coming at you and then yeah. you have to move around the map constantly and like you get money to spend on weapons between rounds. It's really, really hard and really, really fun. Mm-hmm. Does anyone remember Jaws Unleashed? No. <laughs> uh, well, it's a game where you played as Jaws. I'm oh. just trying to find the year. I want to say it was like 2006, 2007. Jaws Unleashed was 2006. Yeah, wow. it's basically Man Eater the game, but it was 2006, hmm. and it wasn't good. No, I don't think so. Um, <laughs> I, I just watched Jaws did. this week, and that's a great movie, kids. Go check that one out. <laughs> the original Jaws. The original Jaws. I'd never watched it from beginning to end. Wow, that would you know? Like, wow, what? Yeah, I'd only seen it in like parts. I'd oh, never wow. watched that's the whole crazy. movie. So I would have like, seen it. I'm watching this. I would have assumed that you would have seen that, like. Multiple times, Seth. Respect I am that kind of guy. Ocean's always around me. Why would I want to do anything to make it seem okay. even more intimidating? All right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, isn't that isn't that movie set in your backyard, Seth? It's set in my backyard. Yeah, I live actually in Amity, Massachusetts, the summer mm-hmm. community. Uh, this is this is a little bit morbid. When was there? When was the last shark attack in your area? Oh no! I think probably like, never. Okay. Okay. If, <laughs> no, if, like... if there's a great white shark in the Gulf of Maine, it's like 20 miles offshore. They very rarely come like close enough. And also, swimming here sucks. It's like 55 degrees at, on in the water on the warmest day of the summer. Yeah, that sounds horrible. like that sounds like swimming in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sucks. I've, uh, got, I've got Jaws the board game. Does that count for anything? I also yeah. have that. Counts for a lot. Uh, Seth, have you seen Jaws 3 or Jaws 3D? I have not seen Jaws 3D, but I mean, I might as well now. I recommend it. Okay, I hear it's it's a delight. It is a delight. 
Uh, okay, and I also stand corrected, ladies and gentlemen. Jaws Unleashed got a 7.4 from IGN.com, which wow. means it's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Man Eater's out this week. One last question for you, uh, fine gentlemen, before I let you go for the evening. Uh, oh, just a topic, uh, conversation topic. What AAA game are you most excited for in the remainder of this year? What AAA oh. game coming out this year are you most excited for? Man, uh, I'd say three-way tie, Ghost Whoa. of Tsushima, wow. Cyberpunk, and probably Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I think those are probably wow. the three games that I'll spend the most time with through the rest of the year. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, those are really good ones. Yeah. Seth, <laughs> Seth. Uh, I would have said Halo Infinite without thinking until I saw that uh, Ghost of Tsushima state hmm. of play. And then yeah. I was like, well this is the game that I'm going to be playing, uh, you know, in the twilight days of my PS4, because yeah. that game looks awesome. And I'm really excited. It's everything I want. It's like, uh, uh, Tenchu stealth assassins on a modern yeah. engine with way better mechanics and much better graphics and a, and a twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm super excited for that one. That's probably my pick. Andy love in chat says the Avengers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Tom, how about you? Uh, probably cyberpunk is the easy yeah. question, but I'm also excited for more of whatever Hellblade two is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. A launch title for a uh, series X. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know if I'm like hype hyped for that yet, but I'm in, in really interested to see more of it and could be cause I loved yeah. the first one. I want to give a shout out to Josh Weinbrenner in the uh, chat for calling out flight sim 2020. Uh, I'm also extremely Microsoft. Excited. Yeah. That's a totally yeah. valid Microsoft. That game. Flight Simulator 2020 is coming out this year. Game yeah. of Purdy. Yeah. yeah. Every airport on Earth. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> and I, when I went to the preview event, I flew, I simulated from my airport here in Maine. Just a little dirt strip. <laughs> okay. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I've never seen uh, a man get so excited about an airport. About a dirt strip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to take the tiny victories. Exactly. They add up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our adventure <laughs> in uh, news games and more today. Uh, don't forget, later on this week, tomorrow, May 19th at 5 p.m. Pacific, Watch From Home Theater is doing Star Wars Episode Three with Ashley Eckstein and Cameron Monaghan. And then on Thursday, May 21st at 5 p.m. Pacific, uh, Watch From Home will be doing Empire Strikes Back. Oh. Please be excited. Whoa. Guys, thanks for uh, hanging out and chatting today. Uh, Zach, Tom, and Seth. Thank you, Jordan, working behind the scenes. Everybody have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.